Greetings, friends. David Marks here with a video tutorial on how to convert your RAW files to the DNG file format using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. There's a lot of confusion out there on this topic. So today, I want to show you three ways that you can convert to DNG if you want using Lightroom. Now, at no point in this video am I going to tell you that you should choose to use the DNG RAW file format. I'm here to teach you how to make this decision if and when you're ready, but this choice is not for everyone, and you may well decide that DNG is not for you. That said, let me jump into my Lightroom Classic catalog now, and let's get started. I probably don't need to say this, but just to be clear, DNG is meant to be a universal digital camera raw file format. If you're shooting JPEG images only, then DNG and this whole video is just not for you. If you are a raw shooter though, then the first option is to convert your proprietary RAW files into the Adobe DNG file format using Lightroom Classics import dialog. When I use the words proprietary RAW files throughout this video, I mean the RAW data and the native file format that your digital camera records. RAW files like these from a Canon, for example, use the Canon branded .cr2 or .cr3 file format. If these were Nikon RAW files, then the extension at the end of their file names would be the Nikon branded .nef format. Sony files would use the .arw format, and so on. I'm going to open up the import dialog in just a second. But before we go there, it's worth checking on a few settings inside of Lightroom's Preferences menu. To open up your preferences on a PC, go up to the word Edit on the menu bar at the top of the screen, and then down to Preferences. Mac folks, you will find the same thing, but preferences on a Mac lives under the word Lightroom here at the top left corner of the menu bar. When this window appears, click over here on the file handling tab. Now, you will not need to check on these settings very often, but since this might be your first time converting raw file to the DNG file format on import, a quick glance at these controls the controls at the top of the screen are worth a moment of your time. The top choice here, where it says file extension, is pointless, so don't worry about that one. Where it says compatibility though, I strongly suggest setting this one to Camera Raw 11.2 or whatever choice you see at the bottom of this drop down menu. Pick the one that has the highest Camera Raw version number. Setting this to the latest version, which at this time is 11.2 means that your DNG files can make use of all the latest and greatest features in Lightroom. If you were to accidentally set this one to a lower number, then you might miss out on some of Lightroom's newest features and your image processing options might be more limited. For the JPEG preview, I suggest using the medium size choice. And next, I encourage you to enable the fast load data option. So far, so good, but I warn you, do not enable the embed original raw file option here, unless you are really certain that this choice will somehow improve your workflow. If you were to enable this one, then Lightroom would actually place a DNG version and your proprietary raw file inside of the same container. The idea here was that if you were to change your mind at some later date, then you could extract your untouched proprietary raw file back out of its DNG shell. That idea makes sense for those who want to dip their toes in the water but not fully commit. But in practice, enabling this option means that your DNG files are huge since they essentially contain two copies of each and every image. Anyway, now that we've checked on these settings, you can close the Preferences menu and we won't have to return to this screen again anytime soon. So now, I'm going to pop a memory card into the card reader off screen. When this memory card loads, Lightroom's import dialog will appear, and now I can pick my standard import preset for copying new files from a memory card over to the correct folder on my hard drive. When I made this import preset, I trained Lightroom to do a bunch of things for me. This import preset instructs the program to add my copyright information, for example, into all of my images using a metadata preset. This preset also guarantees that my images will be placed into folders using the year 
year, month, day folder structure that I think is essential to keeping my hard drive well organized. What I did not tell this import preset to do for me though, when I created it, was to convert my proprietary raw files into the DNG file format. Since DNG conversion is what I want Lightroom to do right now though, all I have to do is click up here where it says copy as DNG. Anyway, to get the DNG conversion process going for these new images, all that I need to do now is to hit the import button in the bottom right. Now, Lightroom will begin copying these files from my memory card over to my hard drive. I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see that at first, the files are automatically copied using their proprietary raw file format, which in this case is .cr2. Once the files have been copied, then Lightroom will go through and convert each of these to the DNG format for me. Converting on import is easy, but what if you skip this step to speed up your imports? Or what if you already have thousands of proprietary raw images inside of your Lightroom catalog? Well, fear not. There is absolutely no reason why you must convert on import, and there is no expiration date on this process. I'm going to switch over to this collection here to bring up some images that I shot recently in Iceland that are still in their proprietary Canon RAW file format. One of the things that most people don't get is that Lightroom Classic is designed so that you can make this DNG conversion decision at any time, be that today, tomorrow, or 10 years into the future. If and when you are ready, then all you need to do is to select the RAW files that you want to convert and then go library convert photo to DNG. Just for demo, I'll pick these two here using a shift click. Then I'll go library, convert photos to DNG. When this dialog box appears, I suggest enabling the two options up here at the top. The first option, the one that says only convert raw files, is like an extra safety switch that prevents Lightroom from changing any of your non-raw files, your JPEGs, your TIFF files, into the DNG format. The second option instructs Lightroom to send your proprietary files to the trash can for you after the DNG conversion process completes. If you don't enable this switch, then you will end up with both a DNG copy and your original proprietary RAW file on your hard drive and here inside of your Lightroom catalog. That's not a disaster, but all those additional files might end up filling up your hard drive and they will appear as duplicates inside of your Lightroom catalog. For all of the other choices in the lower section of this dialog, I recommend using the same settings that I covered a minute ago when we saw these choices back there in the Preferences menu. One option here though that I urge you to avoid is the one that says use lossy compression. Skip that one. I'm going to tap on the OK button at this point to keep this demo moving. In no time, Lightroom will convert these two proprietary files over to the DNG format and will change the extension at the end of their file name. Now, that was easy, but what if you have hundreds or thousands of proprietary RAW files scattered all about inside of your Lightroom catalog? If that is true, and if you were to decide that converting all those files to DNG at once is something that you really want to do, then here is a helpful tip. There is an easy way to sort all of your proprietary RAW files out from all of your JPEGs or other file types. It's easy, but it's not something that most people are likely to discover on their own. Before I demonstrate this trick, I'm going to click here on the breadcrumbs text at the top of the film strip, and I'm going to go All Photos. Next, I'm going to come up here to the Library Filter search bar at the top of the screen and enable the Metadata Search Filter. Now, at first, this tool will probably show these four default columns, and these columns are not particularly useful for any project. The secret here is to click where it says Date in the first column, and then a flyout menu will appear. When this menu appears, choose the option that says File Type. What you're looking at now is the total number of images that I have in this Lightroom catalog for each different type of file. What we're interested in, though, is the choice down here that says RAW. In my opinion, Adobe was a little sloppy in their vocabulary here. This one ought to say proprietary RAW files, because that's what it's actually counting. The important part is that if I click on the word RAW, then Lightroom will sort through my entire catalog for me. 
and it will separate out the proprietary raw files from all the other file types. With this filter active, all of the images that you see right now in your grid view are CR2s or NEFs or whatever your camera's file extension would be. So if you go edit, select all at this point, and then you go library, convert photo to DNG, now you can convert every one of these raw files into the DNG file format all at once. Now, in this demo catalog, I only have a couple of files. So if I was to hit OK, converting them all at once wouldn't take very long. But I must warn you, if you have thousands of files selected at this point, then it might take hours or days to do this. So only convert hundreds, thousands of them at once if you're willing to walk away and let the computer chug along for hours and hours. Since I have no need to do this right now, I'm gonna hit the cancel button, but now you know how easy it is to convert every raw file in your catalog at any time. The third and probably the least useful way that you can convert to DNG is in Lightroom's export dialog. Remember that export in Lightroom terminology means to make another copy of our image for a specific purpose. Usually, we use the export feature when we're looking to make a small JPEG, say for an email, or to create a copy of our masterpiece that we can send to a photo lab for professional quality printing. If I click down here on the image format choice in the file settings section, then a little flyout menu will appear. Down near the bottom in here is the DNG option once again. Once I select DNG, then the same settings and options that we saw with the last conversion method will appear here too. Now, if you were someone who wanted to keep your proprietary raw files inside of your Lightroom catalog, and you wanted a DNG copy of your image somewhere else, then this export option might make sense in your workflow. Keeping proprietary RAWs here and DNGs there is not a backup plan or, or something that I endorse. I'm gonna tap on the export button now just so you can see what I mean. Using this option, Lightroom will create a new file, like this one, out here on my computer's desktop. There's my DNG. And of course, like all exports, this process made absolutely no changes to our original file, which is why this one here in Lightroom still has its .cr2 extension. There's one switch in here that I've warned you about and which I suspect most photographers never want to use. The option here that says lossy compression worries me. If you turn this one on, then Lightroom will create a DNG file for you that is smaller than your original file. This one creates a smaller file by discarding some percentage of your image's original data. Most of the time, this kind of detail loss is something that we absolutely want to avoid. But I will admit that I do use this option when preparing example images for you to use while watching these tutorials. For someone like me, for someone who is giving out examples to my students, the option to distribute reduced sized and reduced quality raw files is helpful. But unless you're one of my competitors, then this feature is probably not for you. Well, there you go. There are all three ways that one can convert to DNG within Lightroom Classic. Before I sign off, I want to make one point crystal clear. The message that I hope you got from this video is that there is no ticking clock here. There is no time limit on this DNG conversion decision. There are some very good reasons why you might not want to convert to DNG right now or ever. There are also some really good reasons why using the DNG file format might make your life better. Since Lightroom Classic allows for DNG conversion at any time, Relax, do your research, think about what best suits your needs, and then follow the steps in this video if you are eventually ready to move down this road. I hope that you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.